Today I'm building a African crested porcupine habitat and yes, the fences are probably too high. Yes, the habitat is probably too large. No, they probably wouldn't need an indoor area because they have a burrow, but it looks pretty. So let the chaos begin. Alright, so the inspiration for this habitat was the rhino habitat. Like there wasn't really a singular inspiration point for this habitat, beside that it just slots in so perfectly in the rhino habitat or basically the actual thing is the rhino habitat creates so many different just perfect points for other habitats to slot into so this porcupine habitat was just like yes it just fits perfectly because the rhino habitat is what i would call a key habitat where you build it and then it immediately is just like yeah i have that would sit in nicely there and there and there and there and it's mostly just because of the curves of the rhino habitat so it just like i don't know it just makes everything work it starts to really just balloon your creativity and inspiration to the max where it's just like yeah in that curve a nice smaller habitat would work and in that curve it would just be really nice to have like a habitat completely surrounding that and it's just it's just a great thing when you build something like that where it just like it looks great on its own but you can see the potential for what can be built next to it and also yes as i said in the intro the fences for this porcupine habitat are way too large like way too high you could probably get away with like a one meter fence more to just keep like children away from trying to pet the porcupines because you know that's going to happen but yes this habitat was originally built for the fennec fox and then because as i said like the rhino habitat is basically the key that's where all of the habitats or the following habitats are probably going to be surrounding but the next habitat that i'm planning includes what's predicted well not predicted but what's potentially the natural predator of a fennec fox so that already made me question of like, oh yeah, should I put the fennec fox in this habitat? Because like, am I going to traumatize my animals then? Because every time they hear the animal from the other habitat, they are just going to be like running everywhere because it, again, it's a natural predator. So animals, even in zoos, are still wild animals. So if they hear their natural predator, they will try and escape. So... I don't know if that's actually a thing in real zoos where they are just like, oh yeah, let's not put the natural predator of this animal next to this animal. Because here at Natural House, we don't pay for therapy. You fuckers, like you, the animals, you can just be traumatized. We don't care. Well, actually, I think that Natural House probably does care about the animals. I also think that like the corporation behind Natural House is like, yeah, the zoo is a ni nice front of like, look how great we are. In the meantime, on the other side of the world, we are doing like arms or weapon trafficking and such. Like, I like the idea that like the corporation behind Natural House is just evil. You could also make the, or make up the story of like, oh yeah, the corporation behind Natural House is really great and such. But I just like chaos. So evil corporation just slots in perfectly in that. And for anyone thinking like, Oh yeah, you like Chaos Poison. We totally didn't expect that. You have a fucking squirrel for an icon and such. Uh, yeah. I don't think anyone is surprised that I like Chaos. Like, they just look at the channel and just like, Squirrel. Chaos. Like, that's... A squirrel's just the natural embodiment of Chaos. But yeah, as I said, the fences of this habitat are way too high. It might actually work if you think of this habitat as like a just standard habitat that they replace the animal like they traded out the animal i think this also happens well this does happen in zoos everywhere but i think it happens also in uh rotterdam zoo which is the closest zoo to me where they i think had like a camel habitat that then got changed into a rhino habitat or at least they switched out the animals because the habitats like the layout and such worked fine where they did like some changes to the habitat but in essence it's the same habitat they just changed the animals out so maybe this originally was a fennec fox habitat and then they threw in the porcupines because the fennec fox moved or such and the porcupines could just easily slot into this habitat 
it's that or Poison just really liked the fences and didn't want to change them. Nah, it's, it's probably that they just like switched out the animals. Let's not make it so that like it's Poison that made a mistake. Poison can never make mistakes. Why do I keep talking about myself in the third person? It's fucking annoying as hell. <laughs> Anyways, so going actually on... Well, first off, let me just quickly talk about like the fences again. Yeah, this is just... This is fence video. Welcome to fence video. We are here to just build fences. We are not going to build a giant fence that a certain Doritos guy tried to build somewhere else in the world. We just like fences. Anyways, yeah, the, there's the large fence and then just ironically on the other side, there's a tiny fence because I just... It needed to just be open enough that from the main part, it didn't feel like a separate area. It f needed to feel like part of the actual other area. Anyways, when it came to the actual indoor area, for the fat or not the fatic fox again like this habitat was just at first like in the very beginning was just built for the fatic fox and then i switched it out not only because of like the natural predating also like the poll of like that i put up of like do you want to see the fatic fox search or the porcupine and so there were like two deciding things of like let's not traumatize the fatic fox also you guys want to see the porcupine first so it just worked out great. You guys basically are the therapist of Naturalis. Or just like the good people, whereas I am evil. Or just chaos. So yeah, you guys saved fe the Fennec Foxes from a lifelong trauma. <laughs> anyway, so the indoor area for the porcupines, in a way it doesn't really make sense because they have a burrow, so they don't really need an indoor area. You could again make the argument of like, oh, this indoor area was originally for the Fennec Fox, but because the animals got changed out, now the porcupines have it. And it could also just be a thing of like, hey, we want to study the porcupines because I think this is like a thing with a lot of like desert animals or animals in like hard to reach places or just very skittish animals that just at the first sound, they just run and they like are like usually really well camouflaged. So studying them is very difficult because like just keeping track of where they are is just near impossible so maybe this is just to like study the porcupine and just find out like oh yeah these little things that we now can understand why they're doing this in the wild because they're doing this in a zoo like that's also like a, a major point of like zoos is to study animals because you get them in an enclosed area where you can just observe them and you don't have to just constantly worry about like where the fuck are they? <laughs> because I think that's like a thing with like the sand cats and the fennec foxes, where it's just like it's difficult to really do research on them because they're like either this like really skittish, so they will run away at like the smallest sound that any researcher makes, or they are just like so well camouflaged and like just the type of animal that they are, it's just very difficult to research them. So maybe that's also a thing for this indoor section. But mostly it's just a thing of I find that it looks pretty, so we're dealing with it. That's like, when it comes to Naturalis, it's not fully realistic. Like, the thing that rules Naturalis is just like, look, does it look pretty? Anyways, so the rest of the indoor section is just standard indoor section windows so that you can see the animals. Also can see if an animal is like close to the door so that you don't open it and the porcupine just runs off. Anyways moving on to the recent rebranding of the channel or at least the new channel icon yeah i finally got rid of my inner demon like the other channel icon with like the red panda well the squirrel with the red panda on its head on the green background it was amazing like it might sound a little bit um egotistical or narcissistic to say like oh yeah my own design looked amazing but it just worked really well however it was hell behind the scenes because i don't know how the fuck i drew that thing but it just it was such a fucking broken mess that i just couldn't do anything with it like i couldn't change anything of like oh yeah i want to, this, to use this icon but like change the slight thing no bitch you just drew this insanity and 
now it's just like yeah everything is in a weird way connected so if you change one thing you have to change the entire thing so i finally just sat down and drew a new channel icon i did get rid of the red pen now because it was a little bit crowded otherwise but that's like a thing for me where i'm really proud of is so far i've not paid for any of like the visuals for anything on my channel it's because i made all of it myself like i drew the channel icons i drew the emotes i really actually like doing that because it just for me it's mindless work in a way it's like something where i could just put on music and just start drawing also yes do draw in photoshop and not illustrator because that's one of the main pitfalls of the other older icon was that it was drawn in illustrator which i to this day i'm just like how the fuck did i do that but anyways so i take a lot of pride of you know drawing the icons or any of the visuals myself the other thing that i draw or confidence from is my appearance i also am a dumbass so i will sacrifice comfort for looking what good or at least in my definition good because i like wearing vests i like wearing suits if i'm just wearing a t-shirt i feel weirdly naked and uh, yeah this does go to the extreme as recently well recently it's a few weeks ago almost a month ago by now but my brain just sometimes just like i wanted to talk actually about this in the rhino habitat but i just completely blanked on it and something else came to mind but recently there was the planet zoo meetup where we basically with a, with a group go to different theme parks two theme parks and yeah it was 33 degrees the first day was fine like i was wearing a bun down because again i feel weirdly naked wearing just a t-shirt so i was wearing a bun down although it was a lace bun down so you know it was basically as close to wearing nothing as you can and a uh, harness because you know why not like i like to make it just slightly like like basically make my outfit slightly just like mm, probably wouldn't wear that regularly but i would so yeah wearing a harness <laughs> which uh yeah i got a fucking bruise from like a well it was bruised and sunburned at the same time so it was just pain and just red and i think for the first time in my life my skin peeled from the sunburn and the bruise of the harness but like the first day was fine went to the afterling everything was fine and such a second day well in between like the first and the second day i stayed at a hotel because i wanted to make it like more of a vacation thing so i stayed at a hotel you know hotels have air conditioning so it was 30 degrees outside scorching sun but inside it was a nice crispy 21 in my car nice 21 degrees and this gave me the fucked up confidence to wear a fucking vest and a bun down but this wasn't a, like a lace bun down so this was like just a full just regular bun down because again i feel weirdly you know naked wearing just wear not naked but i just feel like something is missing when i'm wearing just a t-shirt and such but uh, yeah so i wore a full-on bun down and a vest like for me long pants or like shorts doesn't really matter when it comes to heat like for me like i can wear shorts but i usually just do that at home for me shorts are like indoor clothes or just like at home clothes where she, you might like wear like um uh, what is it called uh I forgot like this is, just shows how often i wear these because i just don't remember the name of them it's like uh the sport um not track suit but like jogging pants i i forgot the name for them but like i almost never wear those at home because uh, even the, at home i wear just like jeans shorts again a bunch down as well like at home i will wear a t-shirt because that's just like yeah that's comfort but uh yeah when i go out or just anywhere like i don't even need to go out i could legit be grabbing groceries and i will wear a fucking suit because why not you only live once and if 
whatever you're wearing gives you confidence fucking wear it anyway so uh, yeah wore a vest with 30 degree weather and i am a stubborn fuck so i thought like oh yeah it's nice and crispy in the car i can survive this i go outside of my car immediately just like fuck this is not going to end well and i thought like oh yeah i'm going to stick it out because i will sacrifice comfort over feel of or feeling like confident in how i look and such because i take pride in my appearance it might be a very vain thing to say but i really just like i take confidence from my appearance but uh, yeah i went into one queue which was ironically a water ride and i did get wet but like i also already was wet because I completely sweat through the entire, like the bun down, completely soaked. Even the vest started to get soaked. So, like, I'm a stubborn donkey fuck when it comes to, like, comfort and clothes. And um, even I, like, I, I'm a stubborn fuck, but I do know, like, all right, I don't want to get a heat stroke. I know the limits. Like, I know boundaries and such. So, yeah, after the first ride, I was just like, Hey guys, yeah, I'm going to change. <laughs> Luckily, I had... I'm just for ease of words, because words today are not really working well. Are they ever is a bigger question. But uh, I'm just going to call it a t-shirt that I was originally going to wear to sleep, but then I changed. I did feel very weird, like, to come back wearing a t-shirt, because again, I. it just felt like I was missing something. It also probably looked really bad, because... I basically wore a vest and the bun down for like the group photo and then the first ride and then changed. So like the fucked up part of my brain was just like, you look so fucking snobbish because you wore it for a picture and then changed. Like how fucking Instagram part can you get? Like how self-absorbed can you get when it comes to that? Uh, yeah. In the end, I just didn't care because uh, yeah, don't want to get, get a heat stroke. And like, it might have looked really idiotic for, for me, but um, in the end, nobody's going to remember. Like, that's like a thing. You do stupid stuff, nobody's usually going to remember. Like, just think of like, uh, what stupid stuff did like a friend do or something where that where you're like, oh yeah, that's going to just haunt them for life. No, it doesn't. Nobody cares too much. Like, it might be a funny joke if it's, like, really funny, just hilarious. But most of the time, people will forget. So, you know, make mistakes. Most people will forget in, like, five minutes. Anyways, so, yeah. That's just, I take confidence from my appearance. I'm stubborn as fuck. And I sweat through an entire vest. Because, yeah. Let's, uh... Sometimes I need to rein myself in when it comes to like wearing vests and suits and such. I just like a suit. I have like five suit jackets. I don't know what the actual word for it is. And uh, yeah, I have I think now four, five vests. I don't really have like specific like suit pants. And no, for all of your British people there out here, I'm not talking about underwear because I know that some of you people think like oh yeah pants as underwear no 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 just no anyways i should probably have talked about the actual habitat but i just like that story way too much of me just being a dumbass but yeah the rock wall was just like it needed to separate the habitat from the staff area because while the uh, rhino habitat is a key area for the placement of other habitats this habitat the porcupine habitat was a key area for connecting a lot of stuff because it's in between uh the huge staff area in the front then there's the information center to the right of it and then on the other side you have the rhino habitat so it had to sort of connect all of these things it had to have a pod so that the staff didn't have to walk all around the information center and the penguin habitat so that they have like just a clear just easy pod and they don't have to walk all that way so there was that and I needed to of course make it so that you couldn't see the staff area even though from the penguin habitat, that you can now actually do see the staff area you can like see the building centers and a dick shaped thing that I made that like when I when I was building it didn't 
like it didn't come to me of like yeah this looks like a fucking dick it, now it's just like yeah i made a dick <laughs> anyways back to the actual thing that we're building right now because this is a new thing when it comes to naturalis we have a wheelchair ramp this wasn't possible with other builds because usually when it comes to height difference i go for like one well not one i go for four or maybe even eight meters of height difference you can't do a wheelchair ramp that because for this habitat this is a one meter difference when it comes to the height of the pot for the habitat and the height of the main pot so there's one meter difference between that for that to have like a safe wheelchair ramp like my brain just short circuited for a second there but for a safe wheelchair ramp I needed a 20 meter long ramp. Just imagine, like this is one meter. Just imagine how long it's going to be if it's like four meters high difference. Then I would need an 80 meter. <laughs> Why the fuck does a wheelchair ramp for some reason just not come to mind when I'm talking? I don't know why. But yeah, so finally we have a wheelchair ramp because I didn't make this have that like eight meters in the sky. Anyways, we're closing off the actual habitat with a nice little educational screen that is just really nicely slotted into the fence. And I can also make the argument with the fence because, again, it's way too high of a fence for a porcupine. But I could also make the argument that it's to just keep out Karens because you know that it's going to happen, that there will be just an idiotic kid because kids, for some reason, sometimes are just the most idiotic creatures on earth. It's fun and you as a parent probably loved them but if if you're just like a just i wanted to say outsider but no but if you're just like standing there you know just like yeah kids are idiots like some kids will see a porcupine and because porcupines look like very dull sod and they're just like very chill and such they will try and pet them and you know what's going to happen next Karen is going to show up at the front office because their kid looks more like a porcupine than the actual porcupines in the zoo because they tried to pet the porcupine and now they're just like complaining because oh yeah the porcupine have I also for a second thought that porcupines could actually shoot their quills that's the actual word for them not spines but like quills I really thought that porcupines could shoot their quills <laughs> this again shows that I like building I don't know anything about the animals because I think that porcupines can shoot their quills that was a great thing of just like, like I was so fucking close to like messaging all other creators of like, do you know if porcupines can shoot their quills? <laughs> I was so close. And then I finally found of like, you know, they can't poison. Like, I think it's like the first thing on like Wikipedia. No, porcupines can't shoot their quills, which in a way validates me because that means that somebody else looked it up. I'm not the only stupid one here. <laughs> We're all stupid together. <laughs> <laughs> anyways so uh yeah you know that's good just it's going to happen or it has already happened and maybe that's why the fences are so fucking high some karen and karen for me is gender neutral like it can be the mom it can be the dad it can just be any parent if you're just entitled you will just be named karen no matter your gender i don't care you're just karen now but uh yeah there, there is just w at least one person we just went to the front office because their child's hand, or maybe even their hands, because parents are stupid, is just full of quills, and they're just like, why the fuck do you have these animals? And it's just like, all right, we don't want to, to get you close to a fucking lion habitat, because you're going to try to pet the lions. Although we wouldn't have to feed the lions for a week after that, because natural selection at its finest, baby. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to the actual build again. So now we're working on a backstage area. And this is why I keep mud brick pillars everywhere. Because I could very easily just like build up a high wall to wall off the backstage area and make it completely just snugly fit the penguin habitat. Because I kept that mud brick pillar underground there the entire time. I never delete them. I just sink them into the ground. Because you never know when you need to just add something to the habitat or change the habitat slightly. It just, it's amazing to just be a fucking mud brick pillar column hoarder. Don't hoard in real life, but in plan to hoard your fucking mud brick columns. 
hoard everything where you can make something or adjust something later on. Just hoard that shit. Anyway, so the backstage area, it's nothing special. It's just like, you know, the indoor area for the porcupines. And then I made a dick-shaped wa water tank or water system. Because the penguins are pretty soon going to be the only water creatures or water animals in Naturalis because I want to like change the other habitat. Like I want to change that, maybe make it like a bigger habitat with the what was the red panda habitat because that's also going to get changed. A lot of the habitats in front are going to get changed because I now have like a clear vision of what I want. But yeah, the penguin habitat is there to stay, but with a habitat with such a large water feature, you are going to need like a water system to like keep it clean and such. And I have like the right levels of like salt or anything like that, just like to manage the water. And so I thought like, yeah, let's make a water system. And I had this like water thing already built outside of the zoo. I built it in a stream once because yeah, very rarely, like once in a lifetime, I will stream and I built a water system. For some reason. Anyways, well, it's mostly because I don't need to do any, like, terrain work. So I can do it in, like, the not active zoo. Because by this point, I have 23 saves of Naturalis. Which are all just, like, where the episode ends. So with every build, I can really just now easily go back and be like, yeah, this is what I built in the first episode. This is what I built in the second episode. Because there's just saves of all of them. But yeah, you can already see it's two round things and then a long tube. Yeah, I made a penis. I made a dick water system. <laughs> I did change it later a little bit. Not like the original shape, like the water system is just there. But I did add like a... How do you call it? Like a door to the underground to like basically the sewer area. So that like if something breaks or such technicians or any like the repairman can get underneath and like fix stuff but it was mainly just like i need to take away from that this built or this water system just looks like a straight up dick come look at poison's build look at the nice habitats also here's a penis shaped water system anyways i hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit that like button i can't really make like a fun thing surrounding it so just hit it because my mental sanity is at its wits end and then there's also the subscribe button and maybe i will not traumatize the next animal by putting its natural predator next to it mm -hmm.